Welcome to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Jeff D. Veronica and Steve Bradley, and it's hoop season, Steve Bradley. My favorite time of the year. Don't tell it. I'm telling you, those soccer people, it's my favorite sport. Oh, I know it is, and um, it's a great, great action. Section five, strong history, and games have already started, and they'll be going right through till March. One of the most famous names to ever emerge from Section five basketball, Jason McElwain, better known as J Mac. He is our next guest on our section on our specialties Skype hotline. There he is right now in one of the many gymnasiums he works. Um, he made he turned into a superstar in 2006 when he made all those three pointers uh, when he was just a manager. In four and a half minutes, hotter than a pistol, right? Yep. Met Magic Johnson, met the president, and now he works uh, with different programs. And or maybe you're just working with one now, Jay. You have to give us a little update. But he's also doing a little bit of what we do in bringing uh, interviews to you about Section Five athletes. And it's called the J Mac Show, which is a beautiful, simple name. And it, and it, uh, Jason, I love it because it's got your your name in it, your nickname, which is what everyone knows you by, J Mac. So, um, congrats on getting that thing off the ground. And I guess why 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 did you want to uh, to do that? Well, it was when I was well originally my first priority was uh, to promote Division three, Division two, and JUCO in the five A five area um, because I met the NCAA tournament last year with Nazareth and there was not a media guy covering it. It was a packed house, um, electric, and it's Division three is really good basketball. So I said to myself, I went right out and I go, I got to get a platform going to promote Division Three athletes to send a message to the youth that it's not a D1 or bust mentality. Division Two and Division Three or JUCO is a pretty tough level to play on as well. And, Love it. And those need to be, those are my that's my number one priority to promote those guys, and then high school secondary to me, because um, right now I I help out at McQuaid with Jack Leisure. Um, I mean, I'll cover some high school games when I can, but uh, but my main priority is Division Three. I mean, it's just it, it needs to be promoted out there. Well, I'm a former Division Three guy myself. I uh, went to St. John Fisher College, and I know some of those battles with Nazareth are, are uh, highly entertaining. It's uh, high drama, um, but well, yeah, we have such a rich. Uh, history of, of, of Division three basketball, University of Rochester. Great women's programs, too, Jay. Don't forget about those women. Um, well, U of R's girls, um, Coach Scheibel's an excellent coach, and they're unbelievable uh, this year. But uh, what you, you don't like remember that? this because you were, you were too young, but when I was in college, St. John Fisher, the women there, were going to the NCAA championship game Twice in my four years, they played the NCAA championship game under Phil Kaler. Phil Kaler. You got it. You got it. Boom. Um, but Jay, it's it's you know, and Steve, um, let me let you talk to the young. You're not even young anymore. You're two. So this was 2006 when you hit the stardom. Now, now we're looking at 16 years later. Jason, you're you're in your what? What are you 30? 34. I'm 34. Yeah. Wow. I'm old. You've run how many marathons have you run? 16. 16. How many Boston's? Five. Awesome. Wow. Five Boston Marathon. Hey, J Mac, you, you, you hit on a little bit about the Division One or bus mentality. When you see and, and work with athletes, what's your message to them that they that maybe they don't know how good the, the competition level is at D2, D3? What's your message? Well, the message is that you guys continue to show all options because only 3% of America play college sports. Okay. Like, for example, when I coached with Jimmy Johnson at Athena, Brennan Wind played JV as a sophomore and then became an all-league all Empire 8 uh, first-teamer at Nazareth after high school. And people don't understand guys could get better after high school versus they were in high school. Um, and Division three, they they're, they're paying to go to school there. you got to love the game, love the sport, if you really want to compete in college, especially in Division Three, where they can't give athletic scholarships. And uh, when I saw there was no media guy covering the game last year in the NCAA tournament with Naz, um, and see U of R, Oswego, I, I needed to do something. That's the reason why I did it. And I, but I also expand on positive servants in the community as well. Um, and, and, I, and I interviewed every college around here um, this year and a lot of high school coaches around here this year. Um, 
And it's just unbelievable what I've got, like the, the outpouring of support that I've gotten since I've started this. And you have some some criteria, right? That if somebody gets a technical foul or shows bad sportsmanship or something like that, you're going to pass on the interview no matter how well they play. Is that cor- is that correct? That is a, is exactly exactly. I'm all about character first. Um, I will not if you say the Lord's name in vain, because I'm a big time Christian, or you uh, talk back to a coach, or um, you know, like you mouthing off to a teammate or showing off to the crowd, you ain't getting coverage from me. Uh, mm. You've got to be a good person on the floor as well as a competitor on the floor or on or in the sport itself. Um, because that's a big thing with me. I want good, positive people on the show and I want good, like, morals to, too. So, in that regard. So, I prayed on doing this platform. And God, t- I changed it twi- three times, actually, uh, until last week where I heard from coaches like Josh Harder, from, who was a Spencer Port coach the night of my game. Yep. And then a bunch of other coaches came across like, why don't you just call it the J-Mac show? It, you already have a recognizable name, and now you've yep. got people already knowing what you're doing. And, 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 I, and, I, and, I, and I prayed on it for about two nights, and I said, yeah, it's got, well, God, God told me. Let's, let's take a quick break, and for all the high school players who might happen to watch this, because we're Section 5 oriented, obviously, here, um, think about it. The kids who are juniors and seniors now were two years old when you became J-Mac, right? So yeah, yeah. We, we're going we're gonna to talk a little about that night uh, and, and talk a little more about your platform, too. But I want, I want some of the young kids who watch this now, um, and even coaches who might not have been around here 16 years ago, to know – who you are and what you what you did that night and and what you've done with your life since then because it's it's pretty remarkable and uh, really respected. So let's take a quick break. Come back. We'll come back more with J Mac right here on the Cosmo Ferris High School Sports Show. The best three things here at McQuaid are definitely the sports, the brotherhood, and the service to community. I think that's a really big, important thing that McQuaid stresses, which is part of creating a better and great man. You definitely feel a connection with your fellow students here. It's being all guy school, you're able to relate to each other on a personal level, and everyone's very welcoming here with open arms and willing to be your friend. While we celebrate 140 years of serving our community, the kind of delicious joy that lasts a lifetime, we look forward to serving you for 140 more with hardworking, wholehearted, passionate people who will help shape new memories for generations to come. You don't choose to get hurt at work, but you can choose the workers' comp attorneys at Connors and Ferris to fight for your money and medical benefits you deserve. With over 20 years of industry experience, we will give your case our undivided attention so that you and your family can focus on your recovery. So call Connors and Ferris, the workers' comp attorneys dedicated to fighting for injured workers' rights. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Local McDonald's operators care about our local schools, teams, and student-athletes. That's why they support the return of high school athletics in the Rochester area and around the state. See you before or after the big game at McDonald's. Welcome back, Section 5. Game on! Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do. Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness, your goal is our goal.
Welcome back to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. I'm Jeff DeVeronica with my longtime co-host, actually short-time co-host, longtime friend and colleague at the Democrat and Chronicle. First time, long time. First time, long time. Steve Bradley. Um, let's welcome on to our specialties hotline uh, a, a, a young man who's, well, not, he's, he's 34 he's now. He's young compared to us. He's young compared to us, yeah. But it was, and again, not not a lot of kids. If you're you've got if you're a 16 year old kid now, you were just being born when Jason McElwain, J Mac, is it McElwain or McElwain? It's McElwain, Jeff. McElwain. All right, <laughs> McElwain. Jason McElwain became J Mac on February 15th, 2006. Greece Athena against Spencerport, last regular season game before sectionals. Athena trying to clinch a league title, and they got out to a big lead. And Jason was just the manager of the team. I think you had tried out earlier in your career, didn't make the team. But... Well, let's, uh, let's backtrack that. Coach okay. Ed was the first guy on JV to give me a chance. I got fouled out of three. I hit three free throws my JV year as a sophomore. Okay. Then I was the team manager as a junior. For then varsity. My senior year, everyone knows what happened. So. Okay. <laughs> so Coach Jim Johnson says, if we get a chance and we're up enough, we're going to put Jason into the game. Now, were My people, response to that was, I just want to win a championship. Absolutely right. And were you um, – did you think you would get in? Did you, did you really think you would get in? I knew there would be a shot because, um, we, uh, well, we were, we were definitely heavily favored that night. Um, but if we played the right way. Um, and had, and had you practiced much with the team? I shot 500 makes a day when I was in high okay. school. Okay. Okay. And, right. and, um, uh, and then you get in with about what? I, I didn't look at four two, and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes to go, and of course his teammates are all passing the ball to him, and 20 point six threes. J Mac, what was running through your blood when you think about that now? <laughs> well, like when I when I tell people, and I showed this to the varsity team last year before sectionals, even though. Um, it didn't work for them last year in the first round, but uh, hopefully it works for them this year. Uh, look at the bench. Because I was that guy on the bench that always freaking cheered like heck, even though, uh, even though I wasn't on the court. And uh, I just wanted to win. I didn't care what stats there were, but the guys who were on the floor with me didn't play much either during the year. And for them to sacrifice for me that night uh, really uh, made a great um, – it, it, it made our team right in together to, uh, in their team at Destiny. And then that year we won sectionals against Coach Carden and Arondicoy. Um And finally uh, finally got Coach Johnson over the hump. And then the floodgates opened won six of them uh, after that. So Now, you probably don't know this. A lot of people don't know this. But the, I don't think there was any media there that night at the game. Um, no. I can tell you that I was in a news meeting – a day or two before, where James Johnson and myself were sitting there, and we said to one of our editors, "Maybe we should go to that game because it's you know because Jim Johnson said they might put this kid, the manager, in if if he gets <laughs> in if he if they get up enough." And we're like, you know what? There's a league title at stake. Um, that might not happen. There's other teams out there. We don't need to be there for that game. So we were almost there, and I remember the next morning. It was a Section 5 girls basketball seating luncheon, and I saw Mike Butler there. He was then the Greece Athena coach, and he said, did you hear about he was, J-Mac he, he last night? He and I Athena soccer together for yes. the last eight years. Yes, but he, he, I said, what are you talking about? He's like, the manager last night, Jason, he made seven threes. And I'm like, what are you ta- I don't know what you're talking about. Huh. And by 5 o'clock news that day, you were, you were a celebrity. People know. Here's what I was going to ask you, and I blanked out a minute ago. Were people calling you J-Mac before that night? Well, Jimmy Johnson couldn't pronounce my last name. And you know, still Mc- a lot of people can't. So McElwain. I started my sophomore year because of Jerry McNamara. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. So. All right. And then you became more famous than so, Jerry McNamara. Jason, real quick, what, do you, what are you doing now? You're, you're in the gym at McQuaid as we speak. Just give us a little I, uh, synopsis coached, of what you're doing. I, I coached the eighth grade team here. Um, how it got me to this point was after Jimmy Johnson left in 2016, it was actually after Anthony Lamb graduated. Um, it, and I just felt that God told me to uh, spread my wings elsewhere. And I was over at Hilton for two years with Mike Butler at the JV level. 
I was over with him at Spence Support for one year and then went over to North Star for a year uh, during the COVID year. We won sectionals there. Because um, I, I, back in 2020, I got saved by Jesus Christ. Um, I became a big time Christian because everything got taken away during COVID and I was really uh, in a mental health state that was not good at one point. And I joined the church through that. Really, okay. and uh, we joined a church and actually the pastor at my church, Pastor Bredo, his nephew was on Spencer for the night of my 20 point game. <laughs> so it came full circle. And uh, in 2020, I uh, got saved and I've grown up in the Bible sense. I grew up loving the Lord sense and changed my way of thinking sense. Um, then I, uh, I coached soccer for eight year, for eight years with Mike Butler as a strength conditioning guy, and the program hadn't won anything. In 2014, we won states, four sectional yeah. titles in eight years. Um, you've mentioned him a couple years. times. You, you you've had some good mentors. What have you learned from Mike Butler? What I learned from Mike Butler is being brutally honest with kids, um, and being very simple, and and, uh, and holding holding them more accountable, and uh, and no know, knowing when to how to balance when to have fun and when not to when to be serious. Um, but nothing compares to Coach Johnson. Um, that's that's the one who my biggest mentor in coaching and and what we accomplished together playing and coaching in the program is just incredible. What we built there and now. There's someone that's more famous than me now coming out of Greece, Athena, playing for Golden State. And Anthony that's Lawrence. right. Turned out a game. It puts a tear in my eye that I got to coach this, I coach this kid for four, for four years. How and, great is that seeing him playing with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson? So, so Jason, you're going you down our que- you, You're answering our questions before we can ask him. That's how good this is going. Give us your best Anthony Lamb story. <laughs> that you can say on the show. Well, well, Anthony. Uh, his work ethic is just second to none. Um, the kid would be in the gym before the coaches are in the gym. It, it's just the bottom line. He, Draymond and, Green just said. Draymond Green said that a week ago. You see that quote from Draymond Green? Been yeah. For us, and uh, he always wanted to learn. He always wanted to get better. Um, plus, I mean, like if he didn't have Sarkis, Wind, Dion, Zach DeSalvo, Peter Ford around the he would have a lot more points in high school without those guys there. I mean, that's how good our teams were. And those teams wanted to be in the gym. That's why we won. And uh, that's why I'm trying to bring you here to Jack Leisure at McQuay. Because, uh, like, Jack Leisure was my boyhood, boyhood idol when I was a player as a freshman. When the 03 team that Tyler Ralph, Tyler Ralph, Pat Nettle, Jack Leisure, yep. and those guys. Right, Pat always, Nella. Like, they, McQuaid right now was, was my dream spot when I left Athena when Jimmy retired because I wanted to be around those guys because those guys were more successful than I am. And, uh, and they were like my idols. That's when I knew what a sectional title was. Um, Jack Leisure, talk about hotter than a pistol. That guy could – he could shoot it. Huh? Oh, yeah. hey, you and Coach yeah. Leisure ever play horse? We play pickup a lot together, and my, my job is just to set screens for him. <laughs> that's a good that's a good assistant coach when you you set screens for your boss that's smart well i tried to set screens for him but i don't know if they're successful I put in that well i'm uh i'm real impressed with what you're doing uh steven I, said this before we started that interview you asked some really good questions to the athletes i really respect your uh your uh your baseline to not promote kids who are not being good people um, if they're mouthing off to the coach or being a hothead to a referee, I'm with you, man. Uh, well, as a journalist I, I, for 25 years, is, I, I. The thing is, I don't want to bring the, I don't want to bring a politics to the thing either. I just want to keep it real. You know what I mean? And I've gone and asked mentors like Paul Gotham and all those guys, and that's what I wanted to be real with the athletes and the coaches. Because I was definitely. You're 100 percent the real article, my friend. You are uh, you are very genuine, and we appreciate that for sure, right, Steve? Yeah, J Mac, thanks for coming on, and uh, you know, fo- follow J Mac because you learn a lot, and and you you are seeing things that aren't covered, and and um, everything needs its platform, and 
his interviews uh, with Nazareth basketball. He he interviewed a referee recently. He brings James it. Uh, uh, yep, James. I interviewed Hoffman, uh, the school bus driver today. Awesome. A new, fresh perspective. And we're glad you're out there, J-Mac, and keep doing good things. Appreciate your time. God bless. Jason McElwain, J-Mac, right here on the Cosm Ferris High School Sports Show. Make sure you check him out on social media. He is dynamic. And, again, he told, told some stories tonight that I never knew. So pretty cool stuff. Um, thank you, too, for tuning in and watching us right here on the Cosm Ferris High School Sports Show. For Steve Bradley and our producer, Joe Brott, my name is Jeff DeVeronica. Have yourself a great day, everybody.